Yeah, g'day. Mark here, and welcome back to my channel. My main method of destroying taps is carelessness, but there's a lot more options when it comes to removing a broken tap. If you're lucky, you didn't tap it in too deep, and you can just sort of work it out, massage it out with maybe long nose pliers or, or punch it around and get it out that way. Of course, if you're on the high end, then you can use one of those portable electric discharge machining setups and just spark erode the tap, tap away to nothing. But what do you do if you break off the tap so deep into the part that you can't unscrew it and you're not blessed by Tafari Matia, so you're kind of looking at scrap. But by chance, just after breaking off a tap in a piece of half-finished work, I was chatting with Stefan Gotteswinter and he recommended I try just mill it out. Now I was a bit sceptical at first because high speed steel is normally up around 65 Rockwell C or even higher, but if the god of lightning hasn't blessed you, you've got to turn to the prophet of tool making instead. Now remember, if you're planning to break off a tap in a part, it's very important to maximize your investment in the part first. Here I had all my contours milled, all the holes spotted, drilled, and countersunk. Now it's really easy to break off a tap by hand tapping, especially if you put no effort into ensuring that the tap is aligned with the hole. But in this case, I thought the best way of doing it would be to get a rather blunt tap and then use my tapmatic automatic tapping head. Hear that squeaking? That's a good sign that something's not happy in the thread but I only set up that test tapping for eight millimeters deep where it finally needs to be threaded all the way through. Yeah, that really is not ideal. I wonder if it's got any interest in moving back out. Hmm. It's about now that you realize if I'd made this bar just one nut longer, it would have been almost no extra effort up to this stage. I'm not sure whether that tap was a bit blunt or something wrong with my toolpath there. Either way, it's dead. I wonder if that tap was already damaged. I didn't actually look at it before I used it. On the one hand, this is not a very valuable part. I could still save at least two nuts. Now, before I try and mill out this broken tap, I think I'll continue and just finish tapping all the other holes because if I do break a second tap, I then have the option of milling both out at the same time or scrapping the part and starting again. If you find this part boring and you're only here because you want to see where the milling out a tap works, take a look down in the description of this video because I've got chapter markings and you can jump straight to the tap removal. Mail time. I noticed they had these nice sets of Ruko core borers on Amazon. So they should be kind of handy, nice and short, and supposedly cut with less force than a normal boring tool. Since I tried to weld an ER16 nut to a part I was making the other day, had to get a couple of replacements, and also grabbed another set of collets to go with them. Hey, wait a minute. This set only goes up to 22. I'm sure I ordered a set that goes to 32. Yep, sure enough, they sent me the wrong set. Bugger. Right, it's now a couple of days later, and this is Amazon's next attempt to send me my core drills. I've just taken another look at this website, and if you ask me, the problem is that they've got the wrong information in their advert, because it says it's a seven piece set, and it's got the sizes 12, 14, 18, 20, 22, 24, 28, 30, and 32. So I count that as nine rather than seven already. So if we open this up, I'm gonna pretty much guarantee that I've got exactly the same set that I got last time. And it's gonna top out once again at the size 22. And look at that. Yep. So the problem is that Amazon doesn't know what they're selling. I had a look and I do have one other brand new M8 tab. So I think I'll switch this out. Yeah, I wonder whether that was me not setting the 
clutch correctly, but I've got the torque cranked down at level one, which is its lowest torque setting. I would have expected the clutch to slip before it broke. I mean, I did drive it down into an existing thread. Maybe it doesn't like that. The way it squeaked before it broke sounded to me like maybe lack of lubrication, although I had put some spray cutting oil down that hole. Really not that sure. Hope this one doesn't follow its mate straight away. I think what I'll do is tap this not quite as deep. At least that'll give me a nice straight starting hole and then I can still hand tap it with a bit more feel afterwards. I look back at the tool path I used the first time and I only hit it in feeding at 70 millimeters per minute. That shouldn't have mattered. If the infeed's slower than the pitch rate, it should have just pulled itself out, disconnected, waited for the spindle to catch up, tapped a bit more, disconnected. That shouldn't have caused a breakage. I suspect it was a blunt tap or something. Last time I also used a drilling cycle, a G81, and the issue with that is it retracts at rapid speed. I was pretty sure I had enough length of stroke that a retract at full speed would not be a problem, but this time I'll do it with a program so the retract is at a bit more than 3x. The pitch of M8 is 1.25 millimeters per turn. The spindle has got a slower speed of 80 rpm so that means 80 times 1.25 means in a minute that screw is going to go in 100 millimeters so I need a feed rate of 100 to keep up with the speed the screw's going. So when it's under pressure it's, it's cutting. Once the the spindle pulls up again this comes out and just freewheels until it's pulled a bit further and then it engages an opposite gear set which spins this backwards at I think it's three times the speed of the spindle. So I need about 300 millimeters per minute of retract speed. Okay, let's just check that toolpath by cutting some air. It doesn't look very dramatic when it's cut out cutting air. Okay, I need a little bit more retract distance to get that out. That was cutting nicely. Well, that worked great. So I'll just make sure those are tapped deep enough. First one I've already done. These Starrett tap wrenches are just fantastically made. Beautiful, beautiful finish. This is a size 91B. It was a gift from a very generous viewer. Fabulous tool to use. Yeah, I could have easily gone deeper with the Tapmatic, I think. This tap's cutting beautifully. Now I mentioned that I'd broken that tap off in the work to Stefan Gotteswinter, and he said, have you thought about milling it out? I was a bit surprised. Now T-nut's not really the high value job which justifies killing a four millimeter end mill to rescue it. But on the other hand, this is a technique I've never tried and if I never practice it, I won't be able to do it when the important job comes. So this seems like the perfect practice piece. Now this 4mm end mill is not new. It's one I bought as part of a package deal of partially worn end mills, but it doesn't look too bad yet. Now trying to mill out high speed steel, it's probably going to get all chipped out and damaged anyway. So I'm not expecting it to survive this.
Stefan's recommendation was a helical cut with just 0 0.03, so three one hundredths of a millimeter step down on each pitch with a 200 millimeters per second feed rate and blow heaps of air on it. I'll just do a test with three orbital cuts out here before it goes into the work. I haven't hand programmed arcs very often and as you can see, neither of the two which I've done so far are correct. Okay, I've just switched the R for a K. Since we're in the edge here, we want the center point to be 1.4 below where we currently are. So K minus 1.4. Let's see if that does it. K word given for an XY plane. Oops, I've got the wrong plane mode. Oh yeah, that's supposed to be a J. The Y axis in the G17 mode is a J. Uh, that looks good. Okay, so I've programmed it with just feed rate moved down to X0, then spiraling in for one millimeter. That's uh, 33 passes, and then retracting. Let's see what the first millimeter does for us. But I've also set up a air gun. Well, so far that seems to be working really well. So I'll just continue. Oh, that worked brilliantly. All clear. The mill's going to need a really thorough cleanup because it's now covered in high speed steel dust. But that's super aggressive. And then there's the end mill. How did it fare? Well, that appears to have survived remarkably well. There's no obvious breakout or anything. Right, before I can run another tap down there and make sure it's threads are nice. I'll just go around with a scriber. Just make sure any old pieces of tap are removed. It felt a bit crunchy where it clicked. This board, I thought I'd take that tap back out and just put some more cutting oil in it, maybe flush out any bits that are still there. But after that, there were no more issues and the tap went through nice and cleanly. Well, that has worked way better than I could have hoped. Those threads look pretty much unscathed. So look at that, it's looking fantastic. It doesn't even seem like the thread which the tap was broken off in is significantly damaged. So I must say, Stefan, thanks very much for that method. I'm sure I'm gonna need it in the future. And special bonus when the four millimeter mill doesn't even get trashed doing it. So that was brilliant. Thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for watching.